Hello, my name is Nguyen Lee and you're watching Guitar Mania channel. We have been looking forward <coughs> to seeing you on the Austrian stage for a very long time and understand you've been playing here in recent years as well. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Vienna and you're playing tonight with a trio formation. Can yes. you tell us a bit about that? It's a new trio. It's, um, it's going to be the, third, the fourth time we, uh, of a concert. It's a trio that I've called Fire on Water with um, Stéphane Edouard on percussion and uh, Chris Jennings on acoustic bass and um, Chris comes from Canada, but he lives in Paris, and Stéphane uh, was born from uh, Indian parents, but uh, in Paris. And so uh, just this, uh, I love the, the fact that they are, the, they are cross-culture, because this is very important in my, in my path, in my music, to be uh, able and to be inspired by so many uh, cultures and so many different um, point of views. Yeah, and I understand, I mean, talking about cross-culture, you have yourself so many influences as you're coming, you, ha you have one, one influences, Jimi Hendrix, you have rock influences, but mm -hmm. then there's the jazz influences, and of course, uh, I think Vietnam, Vietnam is, music. Yeah, of course. Yeah, um, I think um, all all of this started when I, especially when I when I did my first solo album uh, in '89 uh, called Miracles, and uh, I mean also on the same at the same time I, I was doing uh, studies at uh, University of uh, Philosophy and Visual Arts, and um, I always loved to to think about about what I was doing. So as a musician. I think as an artist, the, the one of the most important things to, to do is to have uh, your own voice. I mean, if you are an, an artist, it's because you have to say something to the world. And that thing has to be interesting, of course, and unique and sincere, and otherwise don't do it. That's, that's always my, my point of view. And, and because of that, uh, identity is, is a really, really crucial topic. Uh, in everything I do, and uh, when I started to, to do my, my own album, I, I really wanted to, 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 to develop something really of my own. And to do that, I would, I would say the simplest way is, is to, go, to go back to your own roots. So my roots are obviously Vietnamese, but there's also, I have also lots of other roots which are not uh, Vietnamese and not related to Vietnam, like uh, the first music that I uh, loved was Deep Purple. <laughs> Just because I was a kid and like many other kids at, at that time, it was fashionable to, to love uh, Deep Purple and, and I was one of them. And, but, and it's still here, that, that, that love for this, this uh, rock energy and uh, electric, the beauty of uh, electricity in music. Uh, now relates me to, to Jimi Hendrix, not Deep Purple anymore, <laughs> but uh, Hendrix is of course uh, very central. And you released a fantastic album last year celebrating the dark side of the moon, which also reflects your, uh, the influence of the playing of David Gilmour and Pink Floyd, of course, <laughs> in your playing. Yeah, um, uh, I was not, when I was a teenager, I was not especially fan of uh, Pink Floyd, but of course I loved uh, that uh, progressive music. Uh, all, all, of, all of this, I, I, I think I was more f fan of Yes and King Crimson and Genesis than, than Pink Floyd. But of course, uh, I, all of those bands, they were part of this uh, progressive, psychedelic, dreamy, uh, complex, uh, pop music, which is, and, and now pop music is not complex anymore, it's so simple. 
And, and then, of course, I mean, there's, there's this one thing, and then there's your jazz influences. I remember, I mean, I like your adaption of, of uh, interpretation of Straight No Chaser, for instance, <laughs> on your Three Trios yes. album, which is just a fantastic version. <laughs> I mean, can you talk a bit about the jazz influences that yes, you have? Yes, it's funny that you, you talk about that because that tune, because we are playing it. Uh, tonight and uh, <laughs> I've been looking forward to that. I meant to ask you, <laughs> but it, it's it's funny because I, I have not played that tune since a very long time because that I recorded that tune uh, like maybe uh, when was it? Yeah, three three years. Uh, so Ninety eight or so. The, uh, yeah. Maybe fifteen years ago. Fifteen so. years ago, yeah. <laughs> And, uh, but I, I have tons of, of uh, compositions, so uh, sometimes I, I just uh, resurrect some old tunes. And the, in fact, that's something I, I, I did a lot in this, in this particular trio, uh, just to find some new ways of, of playing uh, old tunes. So what, what else uh, would we, will we be hearing tonight? Uh, so the, yeah, it, this, this is called the Fire on Water trio, because once I, I was playing in America, and, and and a fan came to me and uh, had a very nice phrase about me. He said, you are like fire on water. Your music is like fire on water, uh, which meant that uh, you can go from, from the most uh, subtle delicacy to the most crazy wilderness. <laughs> and, and that's ex exactly how I, I would define my, my one part of my identity. I, I really love both, both the, the most quiet side and the most uh, loudest side. I love both, and I, I want to be the most uh, sincere and intense in, in, in uh, every side. Yeah, and I agree. I mean, your <laughs> approach to music is so all-encompassing. I mean, you, 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 you just can't say you're doing just one genre, but yeah. you have influences of all different mm -hmm. genres. I mean, in the jazz tradition, who would you say w were your biggest influences there? Oh, when I started to learn jazz, uh, I loved uh, Wes Montgomery and uh, Bill Evans, the piano player, and, and all the jazz greats, Miles Davis, Coltrane. And uh, I wanted to be the, 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 the Bill Evans of the guitar. <laughs> and I had my, uh, Gibson, my big Gibson uh, 175. I had my bebop years, and, and, and I, eat, I ate the, the real book. <laughs> All those standards, and uh, yeah, of course, and it, it's it's it. This is how I, I construct my language of uh, of jazz man, we, which then I used for things which are were not specially jazz. But for me, jazz is really a language. We're uh, sort of a YouTube channel and, 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 and fancy for guitarists and bass players, of course. And the question is, why the guitar? <laughs> uh, by chance. <laughs> And by love, I mean, uh, music was really by chance. In fact, uh, uh, when I was a kid, I was drawing all the time. I was, and my parents, everybody thought I was going to be a, a drawer or some, some, somebody in, in visual arts. And, and then uh, suddenly, I think at 15, 16, I decided to play drums, but just because of the fun of it, with some friends who were, we were we were um, wondering what to do, <laughs> like lots of teenagers, and and, I, and one guy who play, played violin, and, and one girl could play bass, and, and I said I be the drummer, but I never played drums before. I just decided, and it was really fun. Uh, it was fun because of course it's, it's the loudest when you think it's the <laughs> loudest instrument. And then, but uh, it was okay. I had fun for some time, but uh, I was not a great drummer. And uh, and then, and then, uh, the guitar player of, of that band was leaving his instrument in my home, where when where we were rehearsing. And then the the first time I, I put my fingers on the electric guitar, I had a flash, and I knew it was going to be my voice. Excellent. <laughs> and. You never looked back, uh, and, and, and presumably also the playing the drums gave you a good sense of, of the rhythm. And yes, the, yeah. yes. Do you still play drums occasionally? No, no. No, no I don't play drums, but it's, it's still very important to me. Uh, uh, I mean, on, on today we, with the computer, you, it's, it's so easy to, to, to construct uh, drum grooves. But and I, ha I have very strong uh, concepts about, about those 
and um, and uh, I must say that the the drummer is in a way he's he's the most important member of the band. Mm. Can you talk a bit because you talked before about finding your own identity, mm -hmm. and I mean you, you you're living in France and. Excuse my ignorance. I don't know what what the history is of your my parents pr presumably mm. migrating to France, yeah, living yeah. there, and you were born in in, in France, yes. weren't you? And when did you discover uh, the, the 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 Vietnamese elements that you now bringing into your or you always been mm -hmm. part of your music? Yeah, my parents came in the fifties to study um, because they were they were part of the Vietnamese bourgeoisie. I mean, it's it, it was not given to everybody. <laughs> From Vietnam to to be able to study in France, uh, and so my father became um, uh, a, a teacher of uh, educational sciences in uh, in Sorbonne uh, University, and uh, so when when I was when I was a kid, uh, I must say I was not very much interested in uh, in my own roots in Vietnam. I, I thought it was boring <laughs> to be Vietnamese. I mean, but it, it's so it's so. Um, uh, stand out to to children of immigrants because they they just want to integrate and to have to have friends and to to yeah to socialize and uh, and then my mother was keeping uh, saying me you have to do something when I when I became a musician she said you have to do something with with Vietnam and I say yeah 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 but I, I, I was learning jazz steps. <laughs> And the, the, the Bebop blues, blah blah, and uh, and then again came the my first record, and and, and again the same question: so if you want to to be an artist, why? What do you have to say to the world? And and then I, I started to to work on on my ident identity, and and slowly all all those Vietnamese elements came back, which were in fact very strong because, by example. When I did my um, album Tales from Vietnam in '96, the first songs uh, that I wanted to work on to arrange were the songs that my mother used to sing to me. So they were really deep already. At, at some stage, you also went back to Vietnam and really mm -hmm. studied the, the music there, didn't you? And then the not really study, but I, I, I mean, especially since uh, since four years, I, I go there a lot because I. Um, I I'm, I, co I am collaborating with several uh, artists, singers, and musicians, and I'm very proud to to mix with the Vietnamese uh, musicians community. Mm. Can you introduce us a bit to the sort of uh, Vietnamese tradition of music? Is it like the tonal system? Is it comparable to the sort of Western music? Uh, um, it's uh, it's um, based on pentatonics, mm -hmm. so. Okay. It's okay. Yeah. No, no, I don't no, have to explain. No. <laughs> <laughs> we all know pentatonic part, yes. and we'll still yeah, play it that, in the grave. <laughs> that, that's that's also very pentatonic is very interesting because it's a kind of a, it's a scale which which is all over the world, always the same notes mm. in a way. But uh, what is uh, fascinating is that the, this same scale uh, has so much identity w when it's relative to each country. So when you hear a pentatonic from Africa, from Mali, it's so different from a pentatonic from even North Africa, from Morocco, and of course very different if you go to to uh, Chinese and Vietnam, the, the, those are more neighbors. But uh, but uh, Korean music, by example, they, they use very uh, it's the same scale, but the, everyone is is using it differently, and then comes the question how. <laughs> and this is that was one of my uh, very big questions when I uh, I mean I'm still still a very big question uh, about using pentatonics how to to sound African or how to sound uh, Vietnamese or how to sound Korean uh, or Japanese um, and each one is has a very specific um, specific ornament, ornament, ornamentations and vibrato and bendings, all of those details that usually are not very important for Western music. They are super important in, in those uh, non-Western music. And what about the ryth rhythmic aspect? Of uh, it depends. Uh, for Vietnam, it's not so interesting. Mm -hmm. There's some things, but it's mostly everything is in four. 
it, it's, it's more, uh, Vietnamese mu uh, music is a lot about melody and, uh, and the passion that, which is translated through, through melodies. Are you still practicing? And if <laughs> yes, what? Um, I don't practice scales anymore uh, or with the metronome. I don't practice technique in the, in the usual sense. Uh, when I practice, and, and, and I must say I have not much time, so when I, when I play the guitar, it's because I, usually it's because I have to learn something, some, like uh, some music that I have to play, or even my own music, because I, when I write music, uh, it's, it's usually it's not with guitar, or maybe the, the, the first idea will start with guitar, but then it goes very fastly to the computer, and then it develops on the computer. Mm. And then at the end, it, it makes a tune which can be complex, but then, then I don't know how to play it, so I have to learn it, <laughs> like if it was some, from somebody else. Right, uh, okay, and probably your ear is your guiding mm -hmm. tool here, and then uh, you, you develop everything and the arrangements, everything from just by hearing and... Oh, it, it's not, not, not only he, uh, he, uh, the, the ear, it's... Uh, um, um, I have developed lots of uh, theoretical um, concepts about harmony uh, that, um, that during my during lear the learning of jazz that I, I'm still using a lot right okay uh -huh. so which can we go a bit into detail into mm -hmm. your uh, compositional com yes. concepts that you're using can you talk a bit about that um, I know it's, it's, a, it's, a, vast, big, it's yes. a vast topic. <laughs> no, I could just speak about uh, the way I, I, I arrange uh, all other tunes, other music, because this is, this is something I do a lot, in fact. And it can be Jimmy and Rix or Pink Floyd or Vietnamese music. It's, it's in a way, it's the same process. It's, it's about, uh, it's about um, uh, the relationship to 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 another music, which is not yours, and and w one thing I I love to say is that music doesn't need me. Pink Floyd doesn't need me. Vietnamese traditional music doesn't need Jimi Hendrix doesn't need me. All all those guys they don't need me, but uh, I love them. Sometimes I need them, but mostly I love them, and and just that the the love for for that foreign music starts the, the, the arrangement. Because I, I want, when I, when, I'm, when I start to, to work on that other music, I, my first thing is, is not about um, trying to, just to make my own version because of, uh, of the, of the of, uh, like uh, transforming the, the, the melody, like, and then at the end it, it's, nobody recognizes it. I, I don't want to destroy the, the ori uh, originality of the, of the first music. I just want to add uh, something of my own. And, and at the end, the process is so mixed, like, 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 like we say about that fusion process. It's so, it's so, it's so fusional that uh, at the end, it's like I had written the tune, the Pink Floyd tune. I wrote with. <laughs> Uh, and and uh, at the end, it's really what I, I want to do. That means something totally homogeneous and uh, unlike a new piece. Of course, there was an, uh, an old piece, but and now this old, old new piece is just uh, something of its own. And you have created something totally unique. I mean, <laughs> and you have uh, like fused all these different influences, and mm -hmm. like that, you have created something unique, and that, that's so <laughs> extraordinary. I think which makes your music so extraordinary. <laughs> and you are, uh, if I understand correctly, you also um, you appreciate the philosophy of Taoism. Mm -hmm. uh, would there be a piece of advice you would have for us? And <laughs> you know, the, 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 the beauty of Taoism is, uh, is uh, those, those riddles. The, it's, it's phrases, it's not even questions, it's just phrases like which uh, establish themselves like that. And then, but at the same time, there are so much questions because they are so absurd, in a way. And that absurdity brings the question and brings the question to you. And, and, 
and uh, it's it's a process of um, it's a process that I love uh, when uh, having a relation again with other music. Or it, only it, it it can be the same for even for human being uh, human relations. That means that um, that by uh, by example, I take one one piece of music. I take Gypsy Eyes from Jim Hendrix, and Gypsy Eyes is here in front of me, and and I and um, and he's he he's talking to me with this music, and then. It's uh, and I re I'm receiving this and uh, and then it's uh, he, he, it's like a question. He, he's, he says, "This is me. I am Gypsy Eyes. I'm Jim Hendrix. And um, do you hear me, Nguyen? What are you going to answer to me? Because this is my question. I am I am I am here, but I am a question." <laughs> And what what will be your answer? Mm. And then you start to to construct uh, an answer. <laughs> well, that's a very interesting <laughs> concept. And, and no, thank you so much for for sharing this thought with us. Um, I have to think about that. <laughs> thank <Me> you. <laughs> No, and last question. Uh, of course, we have uh, lots of, 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 of young musicians uh, watching our, our channel, hopefully. And would there be one piece of advice if, if someone wants to make a mm -hmm. living out of music, what yeah. would that be? Um, I, would, I would give two advices, uh, one very practical. It's about uh, technique and about uh, practicing the instrument because it's, it's something that I have really lived it's it's uh, everybody is experiencing the fact of uh, of uh, working very hard on on some difficult phrases or very fast tempo blah, blah, those te super technical things and and some sometimes it can be desperate because you don't see the result very usual and uh, i would say that don't despair despair <laughs> because the the solution will come later and it will come at the, at the moment where you you will you will not be uh, expecting it, and that's the beauty of it. It's, it's so beautiful when it comes, because it comes like a gift of God, and but it's here, and, and as soon as it's here, then you have it. But uh, also that means don't don't try to force. Also, don't force. Sometimes uh, you can waste your. You can waste everything. I mean, all your moral and, and your body, your muscles, forcing too much about technique, and don't never do that. It, it has to 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 be integrated in, into your body, especially rhythm. Rhythm is so much about dance, or inner dance. And um, one advice, one more spiritual advice, <laughs> I could say that. Um, Again, it's, it's how I, I did myself, my own path. I, I would say uh, always trust in yourself at the most, at the most in intensity. Uh, trust in, in yourself and uh, that means, that, that doesn't mean be alone in the world or don't listen to, to, to everybody, that just means that um, when, when you play, you have to be yourself at the most. And everything which is not yourself, you should just throw out. And, uh, and then that little thing of yourself, uh, if you really believe in it, then it will grow like a, like a flower. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you so much, Nguyen. I appreciate it. <laughs> All the best for the show tonight. Okay. Looking forward to that. Yes. Cool. Thank you so much.